like my grandmother used to say something that stays with me um, to this day. She used to tell me, what's done in the dark will come out in the light. And, and I think about all the sneaky shit that I've tried to do or get away with. That if it's not in the public light, it's in God's light. For anybody that's lived a uh, complicated, drug-infused life like I've lived, with women and cheating on my wife and shit like that, you know. Fuck, so many, you know what I'm saying? So many different situations. Nights when I should have been asleep, stayed up sniffing coke. You know what I'm saying? A lot of those nights when your heart is beating fast. Well, my mother was, um, she was really caring and she cared about people and had a really nice smile. Um, she had really wide eyes and um, she always had my back. Oh, but when I found out that she was sick and she was going to pass, you know, I was, you know, I was hurt. I was only 12. I remember the day that she passed away. I remember, um, I remember going to see her. And I remember how the, the cancer just ravaged her body. Like if, like if I could go back to that time and you could put me in that room, I probably wouldn't even remember, like recognize who she was. You know what I mean? Her face was so swollen, she was bleeding out of her mouth and she kept saying Muka Muka, the nickname she used to call me. And, like just seeing that, I don't think anything could prepare you for your mother passing away at 12 years old, taken away from me like that. People just think that people that have fame or status are immune to shit like that. We're all affected by the same struggles, stripes, and pains of the world. I wish I could ask someone why my mother passed away and give me an answer. Especially my son. He's only six months. He'd be 11 now. So he was five braces, real lively. Whenever he's still walking to a room, he's just like, look at me and stare. That part of me like feels some way responsible. I was out all night, and I didn't go home. And I get a call from his mother. She's panicking and shit like that. I'm like, yo, calm down, what's wrong? And she said, um, Jaden, you, you wouldn't wake up. I said, you wake up, man. I said, yes. Yeah. She said, the hospital, the ambulance is here. And I get there, and they just tell me that. You know, he's not responding, he's gone. So I'm like, gone, what are you talking about? I was just, just seeing him. He's gone. The hurt on his mother's face, I'll never forget that. I actually couldn't believe it. It was serious. I would think everything probably picked up at that point even subconsciously. One of the darkest places I've ever been is when I was in a motel room, getting high with this chick. And my wife at the time walked in. I probably was like the, first of all, I was in a motel, I was being a scumbag. But that's what addiction is. Addiction is a brain disease. A lot of people don't know that. And it, it affects your brain. You, you, you won't make rational decisions. You ask, you know, what the fuck did I do to get here? Especially when I woke up, I couldn't talk or walk. They found me in a coma. And so, like, I, I try to think, like, 
how the fuck did I wind up in a coma? The only thing I could think of, maybe that's just God's plan from the book. He, he was telling me, like, whatever the fuck you're doing, maybe you need to slow down. Because you can end up worse than this. That's the only thing I could think of. Ain't no coming back from that, bro. Even though my, my, my funeral will probably be a, a, a good funeral, probably be a lot of people that ain't see each other in a long time then. But it ain't time for that yet. My kids are special. My daughter's beautiful, she's 18. She gave me an option. Dad, you need to, to get some help or I'm not gonna talk to you again. I've been a big, strong dude my whole life, so anytime for my kids to see me at a weak point like that it was definitely hard for me, even to talk about now, I guess. When I went to the, the process of going to rehab this last time, I mean, everybody came to see me, all my teammates, Kobe, everybody came to see me. That was, that made me feel good. In rehab, you learn to submit everything. You gotta learn to release everything. That's the only way you can learn. I took the steps to get better. And it's working, and it's over. I've been through so much, I just want that little, that little piece in the world where I don't have to worry. I would say that's what I would want, uh, like not to worry. I'm Lamar Odom, I'm from New York City. I'm handsome, charismatic, and funny, and it's a wrap. <laughs>